Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration. Bless the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Bless the Ancient of Days. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Worship Him. Bless His holy name. Bless his holy name. Oh, yes, Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you, Ancient of days. We magnify your holy name. Blessed be your name forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God with all your heart. And say, Father, let me shine for you. You have made me light. Let me shine for you. Go ahead, let's talk to the Almighty God. You have made me light. Let me shine for you. Let me shine for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the King. we just want to bless your holy name because we know you are the king of kings and the lord of lords we know you are the unchangeable changer father accept our thanks in jesus name thank you for bringing us to a new month thank you for this wonderful day when we can meet with you again father accept our thanks in jesus name today as we gather together before you, let us have an encounter with you. An encounter that will change our lives forever, give to us today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Right, let someone shout hallelujah. I shake hands with one or two people and say, God bless you mightily. And then you may please be seated. Matthew chapter 5. We'll be reading from verse 14 
to 16. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our theme for this month, as you know, is shine forth. And to shine forth can mean several things. One of the things is radiate, show your light. Don't hide it. Now, when we are talking about a divine encounter in terms of shining forth, we are saying that there are all kinds of breakthroughs, all kinds of prosperity. There are breakthroughs that can be hidden. There are prosperities that you can cover up. But then there are breakthroughs, there are prosperities that cannot be covered up. So big, a light so bright, you can't cover it up with a piece of cloth. When you read Second Psalm, Second Samuel chapter six, from verse one to twelve, Second Samuel chapter six, from verse one to twelve, the Bible tells us what happened when Obededom had an encounter with God, the God of Israel, an encounter that led to a mighty breakthrough that just within three months God prospered the household of Obededom that a whole nation had about it. Prosperity so great that they reported the matter to the king. There is a man in your land, O king. God has prospered him mightily. Who is this man? Ah, Obededo. I pray for someone today that as a result of the encounter you are going to have with God, God will prosper you so mightily. The president will hear about it. So shine forth can mean radiate, show light in a manner that cannot be covered. Talking of prosperity means prosper so much that it cannot be hidden. Shine forth or radiate can also mean overflow. Overflow to others. When a cup is full, just full, the surroundings may not even know that there is water in, it, in the cup. But when the cup overflows, then everywhere around we know that something was already being poured into the cup now it's overflowing. 
So shine forth could mean overflow to others. Prosper in such a manner that everybody around you will benefit. They won't just hear about it. They will taste of it. In Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, Second Kings chapter 4, 8 to 17, there was a case of the Shunammite woman. She was not the only uh, wealthy person in Israel, but she was the one that overflowed to the man of God. The man of God didn't say, I need food. The man of God didn't ask for an offering. She volunteered. As a matter of fact, not only did she volunteer, she insisted that the man of God must come to her house and eat. And even while the man of God is saying, thank you for the food, she went further and built an apartment for him. She overflowed. She radiated. She showed forth her wealth for a good cause. I remember when we were young, there was a man in Elisha. He was a rich man. And he had many people in his employment. After every three years, he will call all his employees together and ask them, what have you achieved in three years? Because he was treating them well, was paying them well. If any of them has nothing concrete to point out that he had achieved in the last three years, he will sack the fellow. He will say, don't destroy my prosperity. If you are not getting blessed in the midst of so much blessing, I don't need you around. I'm praying for someone here today. Not only will God bless you, your blessing will overflow to others. But then, shine forth could also mean something else. It could mean fulfill your destiny. The destiny of light is to shine. Jesus said you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. People don't light a candle and then cover it up. And whatever it is that is covering your destiny, God will remove it today. But then it tells us that everything God created is for a purpose. Isaiah chapter 4, sorry, Revelation chapter 4, from verse 9 to 11, Revelation 4, 9 to 11, made it clear. God made everything for his pleasure. He doesn't waste his wisdom, his knowledge, his abilities, uh, almightiness. To create anything, just for fun of creating, everything he made was for his pleasure. Which brings us to a very crucial point. Isaiah 55 verse 10, Isaiah 55 verse 10 says, God gives seed only to sowers. The purpose he gives seed is for the fellow who gets the seed to sow. 
in First Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, First Kings 17, from verse 8 to 16, there was a widow who had only one meal left, but God knew she is a sure. So he sent his servant to that one. God knew this woman is such an addicted sewer. She will be willing even to show her last meal. She was a sewer. Because the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4, from verse 25 to 26, Luke 4, 25 to 26, he said there were many other widows but God knew which of these so of these widows would be a sure and that's why he sent a hungry prophet to her so that the law of harvest that when you sow you reap might work for that widow. Which brings us the big question. Why do you want to prosper? What's your purpose for wanting to prosper? Why do you want to become a man so wealthy that the president will know about it. Why? So that you can fill your backyard with cars. Exotic cars. A car that can only take two people and yet cost the price of 20 other cars put together. Why do you want to prosper? Because he said something. In Matthew chapter 6, from verse 24 to 33, Matthew 6, 24 to 33, he said, hey, look at the birds of the air. God is feeding them. Look at the field. Look at the flowers. Look at all these things. God is supplying their needs. And he said, even Solomon, with everything he had, he is not as beautiful as any of the flowers. He said, why don't you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? And every other thing will be the added addition. Why do you want to prosper? Or oh, you already prospering, you already have a car of your own. And you see people coming to the Holy Ghost service, coming to divine encounter, etc., etc., trekking. And you can't even give them a lift. And you are asking God for a second car. God will say, what for? What is the actual secret of overflowing prosperity? God knows who we sow if I give him a seed. Consider Abraham. Abraham, that the Bible tells us is the father of faith. Romans chapter 4, verse 11. Romans 4, 11. He's the father of faith. Father of faith means example of faith. Have you ever wondered, when you read Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. When God said to Abraham, I'm going to, make, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a blessing. I'm going to make you great. Your name will be great. 
through you the whole nations of the world will be blessed. Why Abraham? I've searched the scriptures. What was it that Abraham did before God said, all right, you are the one I choose to be a blessing to the whole world? What has he done that the others have not done? But you see, God knows the end from the beginning. He knows the sewer. And that's why he gives the seed to the sewer. He, the Almighty God, knew in advance that Abraham would be the first man on earth to pay tight. Genesis chapter 14, from verse 18 to 20. Genesis 14, 18 to 20. So some people come to you and they say, eh, don't pay tight because tight is law. Ah, Moses didn't come until hundreds of years after Abraham. Nobody made it a law for Abraham. Abraham decided of his own position, I will pay my tithe. Why Abraham? Why did God choose to bless Abraham mightily? Because God knows, he, he knew from the beginning that Abraham will be the first one to offer to him a first fruit sacrifice. Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1 to 18. Genesis 22, 1 to 18. And God said to Abraham, I want you to go and sacrifice your son. Your son, Isaac, that I know you love. I want him. God doesn't eat children for breakfast. He wants to make this man an example. For others to follow. He wants to show to the whole world, I am not doing anything I do by accident. You want God to prosper you mightily? Ask yourself a simple question. Why do I want to prosper anyway? After all, the Bible says, if you have enough food to eat, enough clothes to wear, you should be satisfied with that. Why do you want to overflow with blessings? He gives seed to the sewer. He gives light to the, those who will shine for him. God does, if God loves you, he won't give you something that at the end of the day will kill you. Because the word of God says clearly, the prosperity of fools will destroy them. God knows that some of us, if we get the kind of wealth that we are praying for, we will backslide. Because we will spend the money on ourselves. And knowing that there is a limit to what you can eat, <laughs> and you can't wear two clothes at the same time, then you begin to spend the money in a way that will bring you into destruction. Why do I want to prosper? Why is it that God prospers some people more than others? He knows the end from the beginning. He knows. The first car I ever bought. I still remember the registration number, LSA 1363. 
when I, we wanted to do the first Congress ever. And he gave me the vision of the Congress. And I invited everybody, wrote to every teacher training college, every secondary school, release your children, come, and let's gather together and worship God. You'll be fed free. And the one who is inviting Nigeria to come and be fed free had no money to buy stamps to send the invitation out. I sold my first car with joy. Of course, he responded. Somehow, he brought the money that we feed the people. He knows who we sow before he will release the seed. Think deeply this morning because your destiny is about to change. Why do I want to prosper? Why do I want to be light so that I can shine? I will tell you maybe one or two stories. And then you chew on this. I've told you before the story of one young fellow. When I traveled to visit one of our uh, branches after I became general overseer, I finished preaching and I was waiting outside, waiting for my driver to come and pick me up and I saw this young man who was bowing down and standing up and as he was coming towards me finally dropped something in my pocket and began to run since I didn't know what he dropped I quickly checked and I found it was a 50 cobalt note in those days Naira was so powerful 50 cobalt had a note on his own so I called him back was this he said i heard that you are coming and i want to give you something the pastor didn't take an offering for daddy Gio, but he wanted to sow and all he had was 50 cobble he dropped it in my pocket i took the money and i told him i will spend this money myself and my god will bless you following year when i was back in that place he or the following the next time i don't know whether it was a year after or not the same fellow came smiling brightly he said when you came last time i had no job but now i'm the proprietor of a school how did it happen he said, I, I just had this idea. At least I, I went to school. So I began to do house lessons for the children around. Little by little, my, because those who come to my lessons, they do well in school, the number increased. I had to be employing others to help me teach. Now I have a school of my own. He sold 50 cobalt. God saw someone who has a desire to give, a desire to sow. And he said, in that case, I will give you what you need to do what you want to do. God sees your heart. Because some people say, I will give when I have prospered. If you don't give when you have nothing, you're not going to give when you have much. If you can't pay your tithe when your salary is a thousand naira, you won't be able to pay when it is a million. 
the money would frighten you. I will tell you another story. I said in one of the meetings that one day somebody will come and sponsor the whole convention. Everybody said amen. But then a man came and said, Daddy, I had what to say. How much does it cost to sponsor the convention? I said, ha, ha. I can't tell you how much it is going to cost the next convention. But I can tell you what it cost last year. And he said, let's start from there. I told him. I thought he would run away and not come back. Because at that time it was around 250 something million naira. The following week he came with a bank draft for the amount that we spent the year before. I prayed for him. I didn't know he went to borrow the money. He was just determined that he wants to serve God. You know what? He ended up becoming the chairman of the bank that he borrowed the money from. God gives seed to the sure. He gives light to the one who will shine. Why do I want to prosper? Check yourself. Let me close with this one. We've also heard the story before. I don't know why God asked me to talk to you this way, but I believe that he has somebody in mind whose destiny is going to change. Because some people are saying, I've been, I've been praying for prosperity all this year. I'm about to die. I haven't prospered yet. Why do you want to prosper? I've told you the story of a very young boy. Every time they came to the church, he would take one naira from the mother and give it to me. It was several years ago. I would tell my mom, I want one naira for Daddy Gio. So, of course, I, became, I began to look out for him every Sunday. He was my one naira boy. Then after some time, I didn't see him again. What happened to my one naira boy? He grew up and somehow traveled abroad. So one day, I went abroad. We went to hold a program, a Holy Ghost service. After the service, this young man came to me. Of course, he has grown, so... It's not the small boy I used to know. He says, sir, you may not know me, but I'm your one naira boy. Ah, oh, how are you? He said, I promise you then that I will buy you an aeroplane. I said, yes, I remember <laughs> the ambitious young child. He said, I can't buy you a jet yet but I have a gift for you outside and he, he said I should come and see the gift and I got out there and I find a Mercedes S class he started from one naira but God saw his heart and he prospered him he said, I can't buy a jet yet, but at least I'm on my way. I wasn't surprised when some months ago, 
I heard that he has won an oil well. When I heard, I said, Ah, praise God, my jet is coming. Stand on your feet. Today is not a day for joking. This month is not a month for joking. God is about to have an encounter with someone who will soon begin to shine forth. But of course, the first encounter you can have with God is salvation. <laughs> hey, God is not going to prosper a fool. And a fool is the one who says there is no God. And if you are see around and you'll be hearing about Jesus all this time and you have not surrendered your life to him, I'm sorry to say you're a fool. But you can become wise today. You can come and give your life to Jesus Christ and he will save your soul and from now on, everything will become new. So I'm going to count from one to four. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come and stand before the altar. Before I say four, and I'm counting now, one. Oh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have the fear of God in you, you are a fool. And if you think you can organize your own life yourself, you are a fool. But you can come to Jesus now and surrender your life to him. He will forgive your sins and things will change. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Come. Come to him now. Two. Three. Okay, those of you who have come and those of you on the way, Cry to God now and say, Lord, save my soul. I want to surrender my life to you. I want to have an encounter of salvation with you this morning. I want everything in my life to become new. Cry unto him. Save my soul, O oh Lord. And from now on, I will do your will. And the rest of us, please stretch your hands toward these people and intercede for them. Lord, please save the soul of this, your people. Give them genuine salvation. Let your blood wipe away their sins and give them a brand new beginning. Pray for them, brethren. Pray for them. And anybody who still wants to come, you have to hurry now because I want to pray for salvation. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. I want to bless you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. And Lord God Almighty, I'm praying that today you will write their names in the book of life. And from this moment, any time they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Let it be well with them. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I promise you, from now on, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. So, if you will please follow the fellow on your left, raising up a placard. 
It will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect your names and address and your prayer requests, and they will pass it on to me, and I promise you I'll be praying for you. God bless you. You can begin to go now. God bless you. 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 Brethren, we are going to pray. You're going to say to God, Father, you know all things. You know my thoughts. But you have the ability to put everything right. Change me to a sower so you can give me seeds to sow. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. You know all things, Lord. Your word this morning has been talking to me. I have been a consumer, I have been a eater. For a reason, I have been asking for prosperity so I can consume. But now you can change all things. Change me to a sower so you can give me seed to, to sow. God, you know all things. You know how much of what you had given me I had consumed on myself. You know all things. I can't hide from you. But you can change everything. You can turn the tide. Change me to a sower, Lord. So you can give me seed to sow. And I will serve you like never before. Thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Now, very quickly, I want you to take your offering. Remember, you have just prayed that God will turn you to his sower. Begin from now. Take your offering, lift it up to the Almighty God, and cry to him and say, Father, uh, prosper me, and I will show you I'm a good boy. A good girl. Go ahead. Talk to the Almighty God. It's between you and God now. And Lord, I've made up my mind now. I will serve you with everything I have. I will spend and be spent for you. Prosper me, Lord. And I will show you you've got a good boy here. And I'm a good child of the living God, the God who gave his all, who oh God who loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. I will be a good example of the almighty God. Father, begin to prosper me from today onward. I won't fail you. I won't disappoint you at all. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So, cheerfully, go to the nearest basket and drop your offering before we pray. Over to you, band. So 
Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I'm glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. Suffering this morning. 